Hello, my name is Jonathan Ringer, and I am here to talk to you about starting to use Next Packages to uh, start to package your applications. Today, we will be packaging a very simple C application, and we will explore how Next Packages is leveraged to do so. This will be a very simple Hello World application. We will be more concerned about the details of Nix rather than the details of C. So, looking at my current directory, uh, we can see that we just have a very simple main.c. If we look at the contents, all I'm doing is just going to be printing printing out hello world. So we are not concerned much about dependencies in this case, we're just concerned about compiling a C application and installing it in a Nix-like format. So to begin with, um, if I were to do the GCC workflow, I would say GCC main.c. Uh, here we can see that I don't have GCC actually exposed in my current environment. This is okay because uh, Nix allows a nice convenient way to expose that. So I'll do Nix shell dash P, which means package and GCC. What happens now is that I have a GCC application available to me and I am free to install C applications and probably C++ as well, uh, although that might be a different package. Um, so I will say may, uh, GCC may not see if we look at our current repository according to GCC defaults it will create a dot out and if we call the a dot out we will see a hello world so this is in line with what we would expect but how do we use Nix to accomplish this well if we do not want to submit this to Nix packages and we just want this to be in our own repository where we can leverage Nix to then reason about our application, we want to create a default.nix. So what a default.nix is, is when Nix is pointed at a directory path, it will say, hey, is there a default.nix located in this directory? If there is, then that is the known good Nix expression to evaluate when I'm directory, uh, when I am evaluating that directory. So let's open up default.nix. Um, so at the very beginning, we want to have some way to reference all of the other Nix packages so that we have a way to reference GCC. In this case, we will just say a nice let expression. Uh, we will assign it to packages and we will import from the global namespace Nix packages, uh, open and close curly brace, and semicolon. Uh, what we're doing here is the import statement is a very low level Nix packages uh, keyword which just says um, like import and evaluate the raw text. So if I were to point this at a file, it would just import the contents of the file and evaluate as is. Uh, however, since I have these square brackets, it is then able to import from a global namespace. So if I were to open up another uh, terminal sessions, um, what's happening here is that Nix packages in these square brackets is actually being imported from a global namespace, uh, specifically from something called Nix path. Um, And you can see here, uh, Nix Path has a slightly odd syntax to it in that it is uh, delimited per item by this colon. However, uh, for particular items, you can also have this uh, equals uh, like attribute set, almost like a dictionary. So Nix Packages here is located in my uh, channels Nixos. And if we were to go to there, we can see that this looks very similar to a Nix packages repository. So the contents of these two, minus exclu uh, excluding these results uh, and read artifacts, uh, are relatively the same. So we are copying default, doc, flake, uh, so on and so forth between these two. Uh, and that is what is happening, is that this is importing from a global namespace defined by Nix packages. Uh, the open and close curly brace uh, is then passing a dictionary or attribute set uh, in Nix packages terms to this imported Nix packages expression. 
Uh, normally, uh, this is to introduce certain things like overlays, which allows you to specify different packages uh, and a few other things as well. However, we will not be using this uh, utility. We will just want to import next packages as is. Uh, and so uh, in our expression, we will then want to be making a derivation. The make derivation uh, function is uh, something that's defined by standard env. Uh, this encapsulates a lot of state about your local machine. So for example, my standard environment as imported right now is going to be saying that I want to build a 64-bit uh, Linux executable uh, on a host machine that is a Linux 64-bit architecture, but also this is going to be targeting a Linux 64 uh, architecture as well. And uh, so this is kind of like a large encapsulation of state of your current uh, like build tool chain. And this make derivation function is largely a helper to then achieve that. Uh, this make derivation function uh, generally is going to be structured in a way where you supplied a P name or package name. So in this case, we'll just call it hello world. Uh, also, version in this instance doesn't really matter, um, but if uh, this were to be following a upstream package, you largely want this to be aligned to what the upstream package is. Uh, for source, we will just be saying that we want the current directory. Uh, one quick note about this is that the uh, next packages is able to reason about paths, and so then what will happen is it's saying hey, please add this current path to the uh, Nix store and then use that Nix store path to then create my derivation. Um, I will get into a little bit more detail about what that means later on in another video, but uh, so far to say is that please look at the current directory. Uh, what happens next is that then Nix packages to actually build the output will go through a series of phases. So we'll have the patch phase uh, to do certain applications. Then we'll have the build phase to do a few more things, uh, as well as the install phase. This is fair, fairly aligned with what most packages uh, do in a normal make file. For example, there's usually like a make make build, make test, make install. Um, uh, the um, test phase, or make and test usually is denoted by the make, uh, the check phase, um, but we'll skip that for now. Uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, since we don't need to patch anything, patch phase, this is largely used to say if there's a security vulnerability or if there is an update to like glibc or some dependency and it needs to be handled that we'll use the patch phase to introduce a patch from a version um, and so that it's able to be extended in some use case. Uh, but we will not be using that today. Uh, what we will be using though is the build and install phase. So in the build phase, uh, as I hinted to earlier, is that we will just be doing a very simple uh, compilation of our um, application. So we'll just be doing uh, gcc.main.c. Uh, what this will do is just create the a.out. And then in the install phase, we'll be taking the a.out and installing it into the output path. So we'll just be doing copy uh, and out to out slash bin slash um, hello world. Um, but uh, one thing to note though is that this out path is just a path that has been designated for us but next packages doesn't have really a concept whether or not this should be a file or a directory. So we need to make those some, uh, we need to make that ourselves. So we'll do make der minus p to do out slash bin. Uh, and so then this will make the output uh, bin directory um, at that particular path that next packages has determined us to be uploading our artifacts to. And then we will uh, and then putting underneath the out bin directory, we'll be putting our hello application. So if I were to do nix build default.nix, 
uh, std env undefined variable. Uh, yes. Okay. So what's happening here is that in this undefined variable is that we assign packages to be the inclusion of all Nix packages. So what we really need to do is say, hey, from the packages uh, key, not key, uh, term, uh, please look on the attribute set and find the standard environment and then use the uh, derivation. Uh, a lot of people will also use the with syntax here. What that is saying is that, um, hey, everything that is defined underneath the packages uh, key, please introduce all the subsequent keys into this namespace. So what that means is that like packages has a lot of stuff to find on it. For example, there's uh, Firefox and a few others. Um, what's happening is that instead of me having to be def uh, using this packages, uh, key. I can also just say Firefox because this with syntax has introduced Firefox as a top level term in this current uh, scope. So this this should know what standard env is about. So if I look here, um, I did nix build default on nix, and what it was able to do was then built a derivation here. You, you can see here denoted by the dot drv that there was a derivation. So the make derivation function created a derivation, but the nix build uh, command was then able to uh, instantiate or, or, sorry, excuse me, realize the derivation into a build output. So it took my sources, uh, what happened was that my test directory that you can see down here was created into a Nix store path. So that's why you see the unpacking store uh, source archive at this path. Uh, source root uh, from the derivation itself, you, you can do uh, source root. That is that is where uh, the, like the present working directory of your builder is going to be pointing in that. Um, uh, goes through the patch phase, configuring. If you have a dot slash configure uh, exposed in your source, then it will run that. That's very common in a lot of GNU projects. However, however, we do not have that. Uh, as you can know here, no configure script, doing nothing. Uh, we go through the building phase. Since we defined it as gcc main dot c, then it just ran that, and then it goes directly to the installing phase. Um, and there's a few fix up phases. There's a few other pay, uh, phases that go and run. Uh, they largely aren't uh, super important for this one. Um, you can see here, strips of me, Moran, so it goes from like a has debugging symbols to none, but so on and so forth. But the main thing to note is that uh, if I look at my current directory, I now have this result link. Uh, so if I were to look at a result, uh, you can see that it is uh, just pointing at nothing. Uh, or it, it's pointing somewhere with a bin directory, but I don't know where that is. So if we look at real path uh, result, uh, you can see that it's looking now at a, a Nix store path. So now Nix has a notion of our package in the Nix store. So if we were to do result in hello, you see we have hello world. Um, this is a really trivial example of use, utilizing Nix as part of the Nix build infrastructure. However, the nice thing about that is that now ha that Nix has a notion of your package inside of Nix, you're able to use all of the Nix toolchain. Uh, so you can do Nix. Uh, copy closure, uh, if you don't know what this means, it will export what uh, my default Nix plus all of its dependencies to some other machine uh, can do, um, and so on and so forth. But uh, suffice to say, uh, it is nice that we are able to have a relatively small machine. Uh, for example, uh, if we were to make a Docker image and all we wanted was this executable inside of it, uh, then we could just make a 31.4 megabyte uh, Docker image out of it and export that as well. Um, so that is relatively it for this small, concise example of how to do a Nix package of a C application. Uh, I'll be doing more tool chains in the future. Please tune in for further updates.